Hi folks, Dr. Mary Warren here at American Airlines Flight Training Center today. I have the great pleasure of being with Captain Deborah Hecker, who is a 23, just celebrated her 23 year anniversary, congratulations, with American Airlines. Deborah has a fascinating history. I'll just tell you a quick couple seconds about it. Uh, she flew for five years before uh, joining American Airlines 23 years ago. She started out as a, an air freight pilot and then moved over to Piedmont. Uh, she, again, has just celebrated her 23 anniversary year here with American Airlines. And she became, of course, chief pilot and then captain and moved over to flight safety and operations. Actually, policies and procedures. Okay, policies and procedures, uh, part, of, part of the heartbeat of what goes on here at American Airlines. I've had a fantastic tour through the building today and met a lot of nice people, very warm, very welcoming. Uh, they've just recently opened the building back up for tours, and so I was very honored to get a tour through today, and I'm really pleased to get to talk with Deborah a bit today about some of the things that interest me the most. And and she's gotten a bit of a heads up and that I'm interested uh, in the area of safety, um, scheduling and the stressors having to do with both safety and scheduling and deadlines, all the things that make airlines uh, tick. And then my favorite area of all, which is health and wellness and how the last couple of years have really impacted uh, what's going on in uh, aviation and particularly airlines here, American Airlines, but aviation in general relative to COVID in the last couple of years. So Captain Deborah, tell us a bit about what your thoughts are on all of this, any of it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the last couple of years has been really uh, crazy. It's tried a lot of people, but you know, our pilots and our team is very resilient, uh, looking forward to the future building. Uh, we're all trained to deal with the situation at present and just focus on that and keep moving forward. So it's been a really crazy, hectic uh, couple of years, but sometimes when things are really difficult, you have to look for the bright side and figure out ways to adapt and grow. And I think we've done that and we've really thrived in the past couple of years. Wow, that is a fantastically positive piece of feedback. And you know, one of the things that I learned uh, in my enthusiasm and, and uh, for aviation is the saying blue skies. And so I think as pilots, you know that no matter what storms, what convection, what's going on, you know, in the in the airspace that you fly in, uh, which is probably generally the, the 30 to 40,000 uh, foot airspace, uh, you've always got blue skies. So that's the thing, you know, to keep in mind, which is really a very positive way of looking. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I think resilience, I mean, it's just a, uh, tr personality trait, I think, of people that are really successful and you understand um, there is always going to be good times and times that are more trying. It's using those opportunities and those times that are difficult as a growing opportunity to learn and engage and figure out new methods of doing things, uh, but always looking at the bright side and knowing that, yes, it, it, things could be difficult, but it could be worse. But what are you learning from those difficulties? And that right. makes you grow as a person. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And tell us a little bit more as far as, you know, what you've experienced. Because you're now almost two years exactly in operations yeah. and safety and policies and procedure. Big deal, of course, as many of you can understand. And what I've gained today, just very briefly, because this is the expert, is, um, is that, you know, what they're doing here is really invisible to us as, you know, the passengers in the planes. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, we talk about that. I mean, the last two years I spent um, pretty much the last year and a half doing policies and procedures. And prior to that, I was in the operation as chief pilot at DFW. And during COVID, it was fascinating. We became the world's largest uh, airport um, during COVID. But it was really, you know, we were down to, I think, 3,000 passengers a day, which is unheard of. So I was able to experience both sides from the operational side to the policy side. So um, as we've kind of gone through this whole last two years is, you know, figuring out what you can do with, with in, in so many ways, instances, how do you be creative? Uh, when you're faced with a pandemic from a policy, how do you, um, you know, how do you do a lockdown of your company, your entire company? How do you rise up again? How do you have, you know, aircraft that are not flying and crews that aren't flying that you're bringing everyone on board? Uh, as of right now, it's it's all full steam ahead. When when you look at our load factors and you look at our training, everything that's going on, 
Um, you know, we're now hiring 45 pilots a, a week because it's just crazy keeping up. So I think, you know, it's just about being very, having a consistent, having a, a full range of looking at the future, uh, providing tools for people, uh, really understand not only their professional state, but their personal state, right? The pandemic affected a lot of us, uh, especially women uh, over, you know, because you had to start homeschooling kids. I have three kids at home. How do you adapt to that situation to coming out of it? And I think what it shows you just how strong people are and able to adapt. So it's been a really, um, you know, you don't want to say it's been an amazing experience, you know, <laughs> reliving it. But I think it's a, about those opportunities of what you learn as a company and what you learn as an individual uh, and as a teammate, you know, getting through it and getting it through it together as a team. Well, and you know, one of the things that I've really gotten to experience in the time that I've spent here at American Airlines this morning is the team camaraderie. I mean, everyone knows one another, everyone is friendly, everyone is welcoming to one another. Uh, Deborah knows everyone who's here <laughs> in this building. I have absolutely learned that with no time flat. And it's just, it, the camaraderie is remarkable. And I can see where it probably felt very easy to flow between that whole work-life balance because that's a big deal, right? It, it is, and it, you know, one of the things is, you know, it is a family, you spend so, you almost spend more time with your work family than you do with your real family. And you have to treasure both of them and figure out a way. I always say that there really isn't a balance. You know, at different phases, things are more important, whether it's a project that you have to do, it's a flight that you have to do. Uh, your family, you know, your family maybe goes on the back seat for a little while, but then you have a graduation or you have a, some very special event that your family ra raises in it. So it really, there is no balance. You just have to figure out how to do it. But we are a family and that's, you know, families stick together through thick and thin. And, you know, we have to rely on each other as a team. And I think those, when you're going through a difficult event, it brings people together. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you on that, I'm sure. So now that you've gone from that, that meager 3,000 passenger at DFW Airport um, a day back up to, you know, getting back up to full steam right. ahead. So how are things going as far as scheduling? And I mean, I know some of the people that I got to meet here today are involved with operations and scheduling, yeah. but there are a lot of stressors for meeting schedules, meeting deadlines in aviation. And how do you all deal with that on an ongoing basis? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so funny. You have, you have different stressors when you're a pilot out flying on the day-to-day -day operations versus when you're leading teams and, and really you know, working in offices and having a team schedule. I think the same thing, you work the same way. I, I find a lot of patience, um, don't jump to conclusions, um, never panic, just keep forging ahead. Uh, don't make quick decisions, uh, you know, think about decisions that are made, work together, making those decisions. Whenever I have a, a very important decision I have to make, I, I turn to people that I trust and respect and, and help me get to the right place that I need to be. So whether you're out flying, whether you're working an office job, how you react to stress, I think it, it is the same. You, you use the same model. Well, I was thinking, I mean, these are good life skills in general. <laughs> I mean, no matter where you are. Yeah. So I guess I just think, you know, for those, for those of you who are in the day-to-day -day operations of, you know, push back at the gate. And now tell, tell our viewers as well that you do still fly. Yes, you know, yes. So all of our line qualified managers do fly. So I generally fly probably two to three days a month, which in my mind is not uh, I miss flying. I, I love being a pilot. I just ended up taking some different roles in, in leadership positions at American, but we certainly fly. I flew last week. Uh, and so we're, we're out in the operation too. But one of the things that I just spoke to the new hires today is that I'm not in the operation as much as they are. So they're the eyes and ears of the operation. And when it comes to safety, that's our, our paramount mission of why we're here and why we transport people. And so they're, they're the eyes and ears for the operation. And whenever they need to you know, see something, they need to say something. Uh, so I think that not only is for pilots, but that's for all of us yeah, in everything absolutely. that we do. I think, yeah, I think socially, um, one of the things that's come up from the last couple of years is certainly more awareness, much greater awareness of see something, say something. So I appreciate you saying that. And personal security too. I yeah. mean, that goes along with it too. We have yeah. crews all over the world and there's certainly 
operational issues, you know, not issues, but complexities, right, in different countries that you're operating. And so you're an American person in different countries, different places in the world. And, you know, our job is to be respectful and understand different cultures and, and also understand, you know, there are security, personal security um, measures that all of us need to take into account too, whether or not, you know, we're really in the domestic U.S. or overseas any place. Right, right, yeah, good point. I have a, a longtime acquaintance who's a 40 plus year flight attendant and she flies, has been flying internationally for the last seven or eight years. And so I get stories from her and it's really interesting to me, you know, and personal safety and personal yeah. awareness. And, you know, because she's been on the job for a good long while, you know, she, you know, doesn't, I mean, she has an early dinner. She gets right back to the hotel. She generally doesn't, she may have a glass of wine, but she's generally really conservative yeah. in her choices because she's about self-preservation, right. which takes me to my next topic and my my mm -hmm. favorite question. Tell tell our viewers a little bit more about what you found and how things have gone in terms of health, health and wellness the last couple of years. I, I, I think as a country, I think we've really started moving forward. And, you know, my, for my personally, I've always been a very fit person. I work out all the time uh, with our career. We have a medical that we have to keep. So to me, that's very important. Um, you know, light, your life skills, you know, eat properly, uh, hydrate, um, exercise. I always had a routine when I was flying. As long as I had a layover over 12 hours, I always worked out. Um, I always took care of myself because it, it's very important. I think that's a fundamental uh, relieving stress. Absolutely. Right? Exercising, anything that you can do, whether it's exercising or, you know, practicing meditation. I think all those are really beneficial and really are lifelong skills that really need to be just incorporated into your life and made a habit Absolutely. because you handle stress that way. I mean, That's you, funny. I think without exercising the last two years, I mean, we've, we've all had experienced a lot of stress and uncertainty and without, you know, exercising and having those outlets, I think it's very difficult to handle stress. Yeah, absolutely. I could not agree with you more. You're definitely speaking. I exercise, every, I exercise every day. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. And I think that's great. And I'm thrilled to hear this from a pilot's perspective. And now that you're inside more than in the cockpit, I think it's probably even more important. We were joking around with one of your colleagues a few minutes ago about how, you know, now you're walking less through the airports or sometimes maybe running less <laughs> through the airports, you know, and, and, and you know, see that. So um, it's it's even more important. And it's just great that you exercise. Yeah, and I think companies recognize that. For American Airlines, you know, we've provided us all stand-up desks so we can Wonderful. stand up. Um, I, I feel like that's been a game changer for us and really recognizing, uh, you know, it's the holistic person. It's not just your professional life or your personal life. It's they coincide together. And so how do you best manage that um, as you go through your career? And so we always, you know, we always joke on our in our flight ops team that we all, you know, try to do a little walking uh, in between meetings, um, you know, just to take, take, a, take a step, it allows you to, because if you're having meetings all day, a break allows your your brain to think about things and process things in a different way. Um, go go get go get a nice you know salad or just you know maintain. I I I actually control my food by bringing my own meals, so I bring my lunch every day to work generally. Uh, because I can control what I'm eating that way instead of, you know, yes. just eating out or eating in a cafeteria or just grabbing something. So uh, we, we, we try to do that. We challenge each other about who's working out and just, you know, make it part of our professional conversation and routine. And it allows us to kind of each challenge each other to make sure that we're being the, the best that we can, not only as a, a best teammate or a best employee, but also just, you know, the best person that you could be. This is fantastic. I'm just so thrilled to hear this. I mean, I mean, obviously there are incentives because you want to stay licensed. You want to keep yourself in, you know, the good standing that you've worked so hard to achieve. And at the same time, you know, I think with stress and a lot of people over the last couple of years have allowed themselves to go to things that are more like indulgences and rather and, and making them habits rather than that's an occasional indulgence. Yeah. So it's nice to hear that, that 
you have maintained so much and so many of your colleagues have maintained the structure and the wellness, you know, benefits of daily, you know, eating and hydration and all of that. And all of that probably we haven't talked about sleep, but I think, you know, it's it all of that is, is a it's a formula for good sleep, right? Yes. Because if you're well hydrated, you're eating a good clean diet and you're exercising regularly, your body says, okay, good. Now it's time to lay down and go to sleep. <laughs> and that's very important, you know, as we look, especially being a pilot and I mean, we have rest requirements and it's not only getting to sleep, but it's having a good quality sleep, right? right. We spend a lot of time uh, talking about fatigue at the company because it's certainly a big part of our job as pilots to, you know, manage that and make sure that we're providing adequate rest for ourselves. But for me, too, it's it's the exercise. All that helps lead, you know, to better rest. Absolutely. And Absolutely. especially when you're you're going through, you know, your your body and life changes over a period of time. And I think the more consistent that you get with what your schedule is, I think it helps go through those changes e easier. Yeah, I absolutely yeah. agree with you on that too. Yeah. Well, this has been so informative. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we are thrilled to be here at American Airlines and so happy that Captain Deborah Hecker has been able to share with us today so much powerful, powerful insight from years of good service. We thank you for keeping this, this guy safe and keeping this guy friendly and keeping this guy blue. So thank you. Thank you so much.